greeting to my numerous friends and invite them to take a trip with me over the beautiful Switzerland. Takes you for an air ride over the Swiss Alps in the Graf Zeppelin. These are the first sound pictures made on board this giant of the skies. After a bell signal from the commander, the motors are started and we're off. Uh, you are witnessing a flight of the Graf Zeppelin in the Swiss mountains. And uh, the mountains which you see just now passing by are the Kurfürsten, chain of mountains near the Sentis. In the control room of the Graf Zeppelin, heading northwards on her Arctic flight. Dr. Eckener, the commander of the airship, is occupying his favorite seat. Our first stop is Leningrad, where a small crowd collects to inspect the Graf Zeppelin on her maiden visit to the former capital of Tsarist Russia. Detachments of the Red Army assist in handling the huge ship and in refilling with hydrogen. These are the first pictures taken in Russia by a foreign organization with permission of the Soviet authorities. The shadow of the great monster makes a striking picture against the serried background of Russia's forest land. Within the envelope, the crew move freely to and fro. An airlog is dropped to gauge the ground speed of the vessel. Approaching Archangel, our cameraman takes up a perilous position to shoot the front of the control room. Below is Archangel, which lives largely by lumber, but is icebound for many months of the year when the White Sea is closed to shipping. On again, and we are now in the area of pack ice. Within the gondola, we begin to feel the cold. An arctic kit is donned, but there is no privation. The Zeppelin carries food in abundance, and Dr. Eckner, amongst others, makes a hearty meal. The scientists are busy shooting the sun by sextant and checking their calculations. We are headed for Franz Josef Land, where we have a rendezvous with the icebreaker Maligin, which is searching for traces of the lost explorer Amundsen. The airship descends in order to hand over supplies and greet the members of the expedition. Among them is the Italian exile, Nobile, who accompanied Amundsen in the first flight over the North Pole and commanded the fatal attempt of the Italian dirigible, Itala, to do what the Grass Zeppelin is now doing, the ice barrier. And now the Zeppelin is over the scene of her quest. Uncharted Professor Samoilovich, the chief scientist of the party, is busy mapping new lands and demapping old ones. The Zeppelin discovered that some Arctic islands, which we affectionately regarded as British, were only agglomerations of ice. In the wireless room, the operators vainly try to send assurances of safety to the inhabited world. But the rays of the midnight sun have killed every short wave. We return along the northern shore of Siberia 
and come upon a lonely wireless station at the delta of the Yenissi River. We decide not to descend again, so drop food and mail by parachute. There are only six men and no women in this last outpost of the Soviet Republic on the fringes of the Arctic Circle. And so, the task accomplished, back to Arcane. And to Berlin, with its cheering crowds. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe our flight was very successful. The airship has proved herself as a very suitable instrument for the exploration of the Arctic. famous old German dirigible, the Graf Zeppelin, comes rolling up from Rio. She stops at Miami on her way from the Argentine, a hop of over 4,000 miles. This is her fourth flight to America, and she has flown 275,000 miles all over the globe. So she knows her way about, and she certainly knows how to land. Her veteran commander, Dr. Eckner, comes down the ladder and is greeted by Florida officials. Dr. Eckner piloted the Graf Zeppelin around the world in 1929 and has successfully flown 17,000 persons on more than 250 flights. A brief rest and then she's off again on her way to Chicago where she circles over the world's fair. She takes a look at the sky ride and on over the planetarium. Finally, after a complete survey of the exhibition, the giant airship lands again, once more with the utmost ease and grace. The Graf Zeppelin, whose successful flights all over the globe have made her the most famous dirigible in the world, is showing herself up and down the length and breadth of Germany. At the Tempelhof Aerodrome, Berlin, an enthusiastic reception by the vast crowd is assured. Under the present regime, she is, of course, sporting the swastika. As she leaves the ground, a glider fastened beneath the giant airship is released and expresses the joyful sentiments of the occasion by a loop. <laughs> 